All right, now welcome to SD Cost Designs, where we just finished um, our European saddle chair. Thank you, subscriber, who uh, clued me in as to what the name of that chair was. But well, I just don't know. Um, I came into the chair uh, via the bed and breakfast out of Wyndham, New York, Allegria uh, Bed and Breakfast, Wyndham. Please. Look them up if you're in the area in upstate New York. They'll treat you like a king and queen. You won't want to leave. So they had a chair there, and uh, I was attracted to it. So like, that's pretty cool. And then the, the owner, one of the owners said, uh, well, there's an issue with it. And he showed me what the issue was. And I just basically volunteered to go ahead and fix it for him at no charge. The, those people are wonderful. We stayed there uh, two times, once when we first got married. 30, I don't know, four years ago, five, uh, 1986. So um, we went back recently, I think it might have been last year. And so that's when we came across that job, we, me. So um, that's done. Please look up that series. I call it something like uh, uh, European Saddle, Antique European Saddle Chair uh, Repair Restoration, just something like this. So uh, there's six videos in there, and so I'll take you along the journey, how we repaired it. Um, that's something new for me. I don't repair furniture, um, but, uh, you know, I took the job on, got to fulfill the commitment, and there you go. I just have to stain it, by the way. I don't want to stain it. It's winter time. It's January, I don't know, 26th or 7th, and uh, you don't want those VSCs in your house. Now we're on to this chair here. This chair here um, is my chair. It was my neighbor's chair. They had it out in the, um, in the garbage one day, and I, I'm like, whoa, I like that. So I went and picked it up. I don't know how old it is. Um, it looks to be made of oak. Um, and again, you know, I can look for the clues, like, you know, this is a, a screw that I took out. Uh, round top, flat head, uh, wood screw. You can tell by the, the threads here that it's going to pull the work, the stock, into the other piece because there's no threads up here. So if we, if we look at that, you know, you're not exactly going to pick those up in a hardware store uh, like that. Folks are more inclined to use other types of joinery. So that screw uh, was behind here into here. And oh, by the way, this is very, very rickety. So I'm going to take it apart as much as I can for, the, for session one. So I already took this guy out. Uh, it's pretty strong. Wasn't really worried about damaging it. So you can see that the joinery in the front is a dowel, a pretty big fat down. Okay, and um, I noticed that there was a, a nail that was put from behind up into this this area here, into this piece. So someone had attempted to, I, I'm assuming, repair it. I don't know if the owner made it like that. So well, there you go. But you can see here, there's a there was an attempt to nail something down through here. So that's that. It's fun. You just get to look look for the clues. Um, this one here, I popped off as well. You could maybe see the nail that they put in here. Uh, this screw broke off. Um, and if you turn it around, you'll see. I can bring it up a little bit closer for you. That there is a. Uh, they took care to make plugs out of the same species, which is which is pretty cool. This plug here went missing. So that screw is completely gone. Well, that was that one. Yeah, so this screw here is, is broken off and in inside. All right. So left and right mixed up. Right and left. So now, um, this is mortise and tenon. This is pretty solid, so 
I probably get to ignore that, but everything else, not so good. So the Morrison of Tyson tenon here, um, very, very loose. So I, what I want to do is take it apart. Here's a little bit of a tip for you. You could take one of your, your clamps, and if it's reversible, go ahead and take the, the top off, put it around uh, this end, and we're going to go ahead and push that apart. Okay. Oops. Push that button in so it can recess. This is what happens when you're doing live video. I'm going to get another one because I can't waste your time. Okay. This one here has swivel, swiveling units. So heads take it off. Come down here. Put it in. There we go. Lock it in. Now, we don't have to use BFI, brute force and ignorance, right? I was going to smack it apart with this. Let's just carefully push it apart. Let's see, see how we do here. Maybe I'll come down here where I get my leverage. And just start pushing it in the opposite direction. Okay. Looks like some of it came, some of the wood came with it. And that's okay. I, uh, there's a nail in there. Very, very small nail. That's why that happened. Okay. So he is now set free. I'll be able to pull him. There's another nail in there. Two nails down in here. I can just glue that back on again. So we'll go ahead and we'll pull him out. But now we know that there's nails in there. We got to think a little bit more about that. Okay. So that's my plan. Um, is to take it apart as much as I can. And then glue it back up. Glues have come a long way. I'm probably going to use Gorilla Glue. Um, to get this guy uh, glued back up again. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, lots of fun here in the wood shop. Got about 850 plus videos in the wood shop in, in my channel, YouTube channel. Please uh, look up whatever it is you think you need to work on or tools. We probably done a review. Anytime you see a tool in the shop, I probably did a review in, in or an unboxing. That being said, and we'll end after this. I have a sander that I bought, a dual uh, cordless sander. And lo and behold, of course I can't find it now because I need to find it. Basically, um, this afternoon, during my break, I'm a QA software guy, uh, Monday through Friday, and then I come down here in the lunch and nights and weekends. But I went to turn the sander on to sand something, and it, it just wouldn't start. It would start and stop, start and stop, start and stop. I'm like, you're not that old, man. So I have to look up my own video when I unboxed it. And so what I discovered, it's right in front of me. It's right here. So what I discovered was this piece was stopping it from starting. It was start and stop, start like. So what I did after work is I came down and I thoroughly blew it out. And that's probably what dislodged this even a little bit more. Um, and once this fell out, but watch what happens. Let's we'll see if I can reproduce this. Some intermittent weird noises in there. So at any rate, you can hear it's making weird noises. So this was a part of it. I don't work on, you know, tools. So I'm just going to cross my fingers and hope that I did get an extended warranty because it's not that old. This should not be happening to me. <laughs>
but I'm glad that sucker came out. It went flying, and I'm glad my eyes caught it. So there you go, life in the day in the wood shop. I have my other one, I call it its cousin, which is wired. So I got that out and I used it. And then, uh, it's, it's, it's much older than this one. So we'll, uh, we'll let you know what uh, I find out about this. I think this is a $99 unit. And I really like it. It's, it's just a, it's a really nice sander. It gets the job done. So, all right. Hey, thanks for watching. Say our usual goodbye. Shalom uvecha. Masalami tukzin tzayachin. Why do I know those languages? I lived overseas as a teenager. So, serving the Lord. Doing missionary work all over the world. Um, you guys take care. And we follow the, the new series on repairing this lovely chair here. God bless.